Hello and welcome to Pixel Magic Tutorials. I am your host Geekman and today I'm going to teach you how to create a lightning bolt in Photoshop. Now there are many different ways to do uh, lightning bolts in Photoshop. This is just one of them and it's the one that I use all the time in all of my artwork. You're free to go online and find lightning bolt brushes that you can download for free uh, by doing a simple Google search. But by using the technique that I'll give you today, you can create as many lightning bolts as you ever should want, and they'll all be your lightning bolts, not created by somebody else. So with that out of the way, let me give you the two assumptions that I'm making as always. The first one being, I am using Photoshop 2015. If you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, some of the effects may not work as expected. And the second assumption, I am using Windows. If you're using a Mac, then when I say hit the control key on your keyboard, that means hit the command key. And when I say hit the alt key on the keyboard, that means hit the option key on the Mac keyboard. So with that out of the way, let's get started. The first thing that we'll have to do is we'll have to create a brand new document. So hit control N on your keyboard to bring up the new dialog box. And let's name this lightning bolt because that's what we're making. And it's uh, 2,500 by 2,500 pixels at 150 pixels per inch. Color is RGB, color 8-bit. The background co color is going to be red. And uh, you can choose any color that you'd like. I'm using red because it's easy to see, but you could choose blue or green or yellow or orange or purple. It doesn't really make a difference. It's just there so that you can see the lightning bolt when we are done. Hit OK. Uh, the color profile is going to be Adobe RGB 1998 square pixels. Hit OK and we now have our big red square. Now the first thing that we're going to need to do is make sure that our foreground and background are black and white. So you do that by hitting D on your keyboard to make them the default black and white. Once we do that, we're going to create a brand new layer. So go down here to our Create New Layer icon in the Layers palette. To create a new layer, we will not rename it because we are going to rename it later after we have merged it with two other layers. So just leave it as Layer 1 for right now and making sure again that we are in black and white and on Layer 1, we are going to get to our Gradient tool by hitting G on the keyboard or by just simply clicking on the Gradient tool. Uh, and then we will make sure that we are on foreground to background, linear, mode normal, opacity 100%, reverse is not checked, dither and transparency are both checked. Then finding the rough center of our document, we will then move a little bit to the left, click, hold down, shift, drag to the right a little bit until we are just past the center. Then we will let go with the left mouse button and we will then have a gradient that is pure black on one side, pure white on the other side, uh, and then this light band of gray in the center. That will turn into our lightning bolt. Now, the next thing that we need to do is go to Filter, uh, Render, Difference Clouds. We go to Difference Clouds, and as you can see, we start to get a lightning bolt right away, but it's black. Uh, we don't want it to be black, so the way that we will make it white is by inverting the colors here by hitting Control and I on our keyboard, and we now have a white lightning bolt in a black and white cloud field. We don't want that black and white cloud field, do we? No. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new levels adjustment layer that is above the layer 1 here on our layers palette. So we go down here to our layers palette and we will go to levels and create a new levels adjustment layer. Now here you will see this big hump uh, which shows the, uh, the blacks and the whites and the grays which is the center of the hump. What we want to do is we want to grab this black slider here and pull it almost to the end on the right probably around 240-ish. Somewhere around there is a good starting point I have found. So 240 looks a little bit too anemic for a lightning bolt, so let's bring it up a little bit, I mean back a little bit, until it's about 234 looks good. Now, depending on how you've done your lightning bolt gradient that we just did in the step before, that will determine where your uh, black slider will need to wind up. A good starting point, like I said, is about 240. Uh, 240 
would be down here. Uh, if 240 isn't enough or is too much, you can then move it from there. I kind of like it over here, so we'll stick it with 235 uh, for this particular lightning bolt, but your lightning bolt's needs will vary. So start at about 240 and then tweak it from there. Once you have what you like, you can minimize that, and we now have our levels and everything set. So what we are going to do now is we're going to create another layer above this adjustment layer, uh, this levels adjustment layer. Why does that keep popping up? I do not know. We will create a new layer, uh, and that will be layer two. Now, again, we don't have to rename it uh, because layer two is only going to be there so that we can get rid of the GAC that you see here, this extra little floaty piece, this little floaty piece, this, this black part. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to make selections and fill them with black. So we're going to go over here to our lasso tool, which you can get to by clicking on it like I just did or by hitting L on your keyboard. And we're going to use the add to selection option up here, which is second from the left. Uh, and that will add to selection. Then what we're going to do is make sure the feather is zero, anti-alias is checked, and then we can start to draw the selections that we want, like this. And that will then make that selection. And we no longer need to hold down shift, which we normally do when we're using our lasso tool, because any selections that we make are just added to the selection before. So we can then get rid of this. We can get rid of this little guy here, this big guy over here, we don't need this extra little piece right here, so we're going to get rid of that by going in here like this. Just like that, we'll get rid of this guy over here. Uh, and this whole big thing right here, we don't really want. So we'll just get rid of that like this, like this, and gone. Okay, and then we've gotten rid of uh, most of what I see here as being uh, problematic for a lightning bolt. We can get rid of that too. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. So then making sure that we are on level two. We will then fill that with, fill each of these selections with black by hitting Alt and Backspace, and then Control and D to deselect, and we now have a simple looking lightning bolt. Now we can also get rid of this little piece that I missed before, because I did not see it, and then we will fill that with black, and then deselect, and we have a lightning bolt shooting down from the sky. Great. And what we want to do now is we want to select all three of these layers. So click on layer two, then hold down shift and click on layer one. That will select all three. And then we'll merge them by hitting control E on our keyboard and that merges them. We will then rename this as lightning bolt because we now have a lightning bolt. Now this is good, but we're still on a field of black. Now a lot of people would be able to tell you, oh, you just use that and then you put that onto say uh, overlay and it gets rid of it, but we don't want that. What we want to do is we want to be able to use our lightning bolt however we want, wherever we want, without having to worry about the black of this layer. So we're going to do that by creating a layer mask of just the lightning bolt. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go to our channels. Now if you don't see channels over here next to your layers, you can go up to window, click on channels, and that will bring it up. And over here on RGB, you want to control and click on the thumbnail. And that will make a selection of just the white section of the layer, which is what we want. So then go back to layers palette. We're on lightning bolt. And we will then make a layer mask of just that selection. So click on layer mask and all the black goes away. And all you have left is your lightning bolt. But as you can see, if I zoom in, We've got this gray stuff all around it, and that's the leftovers of what used to be the black background. Now, we don't want to see that, so the easy way to get rid of that is to turn our uh, layer mode to screen, and boom, it's all gone, and all we have left is our lightning bolt. However, we still need to clean up some portions of this that are hard to see but would show up if we use this lightning bolt as is in our artwork. Now the way that we're going to find those pieces that need to be fixed is we're going to give everything a heavy black outline which will make it easy to see it when we need to get rid of it. So we're going to go down here to our layer effects, we're going to go to stroke, and that will give everything a heavy black outline. And as you can see right away we have this and this and this. Now the black outline that I'm using is the one that you should probably use. The size is 10, position is outside, the blend mode is normal, opacity is 100%, overprint is unchecked, and the color of course is black. 
hit OK, and you can see all these pieces. Now, how do we get rid of it? Well, we make sure that we're working on the layer mask for Lightning Bolt. We will go to our Brush Tool by hitting B or by selecting the Brush Tool in our Tool Palette. And then we will make sure that we're using a hard-edged round brush. And we can make it bigger or smaller using the bracket keys on our keyboard. And again, making sure that we're using black and that we are on the uh, layer mask for Lightning Bolt. We can then just paint over anything that we want to get rid of with black and it is gone from our view and we won't see it in our final document. So now we have our lightning bolt and we can now get rid of the stroke and give the lightning bolt the colorization that a lightning bolt should have because lightning bolts are very, very, very rarely pure white. They are usually uh, a white with a blue glow. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to double click on stroke. We're going to turn off stroke because we don't want it. And then we're going to go to inner glow and we're going to go to outer glow. So first with inner glow and we're going to make the blend mode normal, the opacity 50%, the noise is zero. And the color that we're using is going to be D0F7FE. And the technique is softer, the source is edge, choke is zero, size is one, the contour is going to be linear, the anti-alias is checked, and range is 50%, jitter is zero. Now for the outer glow, which will give it a slight blue cast to it, uh, the blend mode will be screen, opacity is 40%, noise is 5%, and the reason why we're giving it some noise is to give the atmosphere around the lightning bolt a slight sparkle which lightning bolts usually have in pictures, uh, and 5% is subtle enough that most people would never notice it, but it will still be there. You can make it more if you'd like, but 5% uh, I found works with most of the artwork that I personally do. Now the color that we're using is a little brighter blue than we used before, so it's 0DEEFF. -F. Uh, the technique is softer, spread is 2%, size is going to be 7 pixels, contour is linear, uh, anti-alias is checked, range is 50%, jitter is 0, and that's all that we need, and we have our lightning bolt. Now, uh, the last thing that I like to do, and you don't have to do this by any means, but the last thing that I like to do is I like to convert this into a smart object by right-clicking on the lightning bolt layer and then clicking on convert to smart object, and that will allow me to use the lightning bolt in all of my artwork without uh, and be able to resize it to whatever size I want without the layer styles also resizing because since some of them are only one pixel or two pixels large, when I make it smaller to fit smaller artwork, that glow or inner glow will disappear, and we don't want that. So if you turn it into a smart object, it will all stay, and you are just resizing something that looks to be a finished product, even though you can, at that point, edit it. That's what a smart object does for you. So now we have this, and you're wondering, well, what if I want forks on my lightning bolt, or what if I want to use uh, several lightning bolts at once? Well, the best way to do that is to use this, this technique several different times, because every lightning bolt will be unique when you use this technique. So uh, this lightning bolt will not look like any lightning bolt you are making, and it will never look like any lightning bolt that I make in the future. But by making 10 or 15 or 100 different lightning bolts, I can then put them together any way that I want using small pieces of them or the whole thing or uh, anything in between, and I can use that to make forks in my lightning or to turn the lightning into letters or use it any other way that I might want in my artwork. So there you have it. That's how you create a lightning bolt in Photoshop. Uh, and I hope that you enjoyed this. If you did, please leave me a comment, uh, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe, because I'll be making new tutorials every Tuesday. And once again, this is Geekman signing off for Pixel Magic Tutorials.